Welcome back everybody. Today we are going to knock out a 1975 home. But first I need to apologize to you guys because I think it's been like four weeks since I produced any content at all. I did warn you a little bit though because I need I went on a small break. And uh, during that small break I went on vacation, you know you got Thanksgiving, Christmas, but now I'm back. And we're back to the grind and hustle and I should get the podcast out soon. I do you think I answered most of the questions that came through my email and text messages and voicemail about the home inspection whisper questions? So if I missed it, just send it again because I probably missed it because there, there was a lot and I did my best to answer them all. Uh, that being said, I'm going to get a guest for the podcast as quick as I can and uh, let's go figure out what we're going to find on this property. Let's go check it out. Okay, sweet. Check this out. This is a full raised slab foundation. You don't get to see these too often. They did this a lot after Harvey. They passed out a lot of grant money or some people just did it and they raised the whole slab off the ground. So you treat this as a traditional crawl space, but the full slab is still intact. They, they jack up the whole slab, they put piers underneath it and raise it so it's above a flood line. So a really cool uh, inspection. Hopefully you can get in the crawl space and look around and show you what it looks like. So on this flip home first, we're gonna check out the roof a little bit. And uh, you always, I always like to climb to the top and kind of do a quick scan around, get my path, look for areas of possible water penetration. So uh, the first thing that we spot actually is around the corner over here is right behind this front entry area. We have a lot of questionable flashing. So just because it's not leaking right now or we don't find any water intrusion, it doesn't mean that we can't warn our clients about questionable flashing install or questionable flat roof material install and bring it to their attention. So whenever it does start leaking, we're like, oh, the inspector at least told me about this. So, you know, we have a, a lot of heavy caulking around the around the flashing a lot of the mortar is starting to pop out a loop pop blue pop out <laughs> pop out so and we have some lifting flashing right here around the corner so this is an area of concern and then also reminds us to try to get in the attic space and look in this location and uh, use our infrared cameras around here we had some rain the past two days so we'll be able to see if it's been leaking so, okay starting to walk around the exterior of the structure, uh, we notice that we have some marginal drainage. So whenever you start to see like this heavy leafy foliage or, you know, like the moss growing in the area, you know, you the, wa the water's not draining around the structure very well. Also, uh, you know, that causes wood to rot, fences to fall apart. And uh, this is also a really good environment for termites. So we did find an access to get into the crawl space which is uh, right here. And uh, we're gonna crawl in this area and focus a lot in this area because this is a, a spot where termites would be most likely to hang out. Another thing to keep an eye out for, uh, just take a second and listen. And look, and uh, you can hear that the, uh, the condenser outside is making a you know a funny noise it's obviously a little older how old is this one uh it doesn't it, not too old maybe i don't know it looks like i'm either getting an 07 or a 94. so uh, i'll get a little bit closer look at it but you know as a homeowner this is one of the first things that you're going to want or home buyer one of the first things you're going to want to run out and uh, look at you want to come out and look at your condensers because this is going to be one of the most expensive things on your items so uh, items on your property that you're gonna have to purchase or regularly maintain so you know purchasing a, a fully renovated home and you have a little bit older HVAC system this is gonna be one of the first things that they're probably gonna have to replace so let's compare here so you can see uh, you have a new train unit Boom. and you have one older condenser on the outside so really the way this property looks so far you have a new roof and you know one newer HVAC system and one older one not really that big of a deal but something that you want to put in your house you know back in the mind whenever you're purchasing a property you're like hey I'm gonna I'm gonna have to fix this probably pretty soon 
Oh man, look at this backyard. Isn't it sweet? You got a sweet deck, you got a hot tub, you got a pool, and then look how big this thing is. This is a this is a nice backyard. I, I'm, I'm, and then they got this whole side yard over here. Maybe a dog run or something. Man, I'm actually kind of jealous. This is a this is and they got a guest house. Ooh, nice, nice backyard. So another area of concern while looking at this property. You can kind of see how high this soil is over here and you know there's a lot of moisture sitting in this area this can invite moisture into the garage uh, cause water damage but also like i like to talk about all the time termites this is a perfect environment for termites i know i bring it up a lot in houston but uh, if they're not going to fix this at bare minimum we are going to recommend that they treat this area to prevent uh the home being attacked or infested. So this is the inside of the property and uh, we don't see any, oh, what's this? It's about to, um, just a little dog hair in the paint, but we don't see any like water intrusion really coming through the property, but we did have a lot of rain and we'll use our moisture meters and infrared camera over here. Some more good signs if you are a home buyer and you're looking at, looking at flips and going through your property. If you see a tankless water heater, you have a PEX water uh, manifold, and uh, that shows that they probably replaced all the, the PEX water, all the old water lines with PEX throughout the property. And you see a new panel box, Whew, you're looking in like you're pretty good shape and you may have found a hidden gem in the real estate flip market. Questions we get about all the time are cracks, cracks in properties. So you can see how this crack is straight and it doesn't shoot off in any crazy angles. This is a man-made crack, but also one thing to keep in mind, it's next to a skylight. So we're gonna make sure this isn't a resting place for water. So uh, another spot that we'll use our infrared cameras and moisture meters on. Ooh, doesn't that look good? The dough show. Anyways, a uh, small thing to talk about the kitchen real quick. Uh, we just actually had a recent complaint where we messed up. So what we normally do is, uh, you know, we'll check a few outlets, we'll trip it, and then we check, uh, we, and we'll jump back and forth. Well, the breaker was in the garage. The inspector, you know, tripped the outlet, made sure they all tripped, and then turned it back on, and then didn't check to see if there was power in the rest of the kitchen. Well, what you what we needed to do and we changed it in our routine is you make sure all the power's on you trip it you make sure all the power's off and then you turn it back on so uh small mistake we do have to do a small repair but um, i hope this helps you out make sure that you check all the power on the islands and on the wall before you trip the gfci to make sure there's power to all the outlets okay something else that we're gonna have to investigate a little bit further but you can see the uh, door has several water stains coming in uh, so possible area for water intrusion or old water intrusion either way we are going to write this up and inform the client uh, and then they can talk to the sellers like how did they repair this or what happened for these water stains to get there as of right now they do not appear to be active and then there's another spot right over here um, where we have some water intrusion too. Two, you can see the swollen baseboard on the, on the back door. And uh, um, you can see where they've just been preparing it with some caulking on the, on the door frame. So, um, oh, and an easy spot to find on these doors. They always rot out in these corners when they leak like that. So we'll have to figure out if it's uh, rotted out in that corner. There you go. It doesn't appear to be rotted out, uh, but stuff like this coming in the door frame like that, uh, it's an easy catch, or not so much easy, but remember to check in these uh, corners of the door. Easy spot for uh, to get water intrusion in uh, to rot out your door frames. So it looks like Josh is about to get ready to crawl underneath this deck. Uh, one thing I noticed it's it's pretty muddy underneath here, you know, and uh, Whenever there's a lot of mud 
uh, in a crawl space area, you want to take your extra time before you really crawl in here and look for, you know, hanging electrical wire, standing water, um, snakes and uh, just take your time look around because electricity travels through water and it does travel through mud uh, so it, it you can hurt yourself so uh, keep an eye out for conditions like this but also remember heavy moisture areas if you do not think it's draining properly can cause you know slabs to move decks to move so uh, things to keep an eye out for and to inform your clients of so We'll probably uh, enter the crawl space on that side and uh, see if we can see uh, better from this angle when it comes to the deck. But this deck actually looks pretty nice. Pretty nice. Might want to put some rock underneath here to mitigate some of the uh, mud <laughs> and drainage issues. But other than that, I mean, it's pretty good. So we always uh, get a documented temperature and we put it in every single one of our reports to help show that the uh, HVAC was running during the inspection. So uh, we brought in our tools over here to check this wall because I was telling you about how the um, siding was too close to the ground and an easy area for water intrusion. So we had some rain and uh, we'll be able to maybe see something. Remember a tile kind of gives you some different colors whenever we're inspecting, but and the room's cold, so it might be hard to get a reading. So that's the reason why we like to use both uh, infrared cameras and moisture meters, because the delta can be a little off sometimes. Yeah, so we'll just grab the moisture meter and slap it on the wall over here. See what we get. A little dry. Area of concern earlier. It seems to be dry. And all right, so as inspectors, that's honestly the best we can do for non intrusive testing. The next step would be to remove a whole baseboard, and we're not going to do that. Or we could drill in and uh, puncture. Oops. Uh, puncture the wall, and we're not going to do that either today because we don't have areas of concern. So another thing to do in these garages or unfinished garages or half unfinished garages is you can see how Josh is really taking his time and looking at every two by six uh, rafter or in between the walls because that's how close you have to look to find these uh, shelter tubes in the garage. So just take your time, slow down. Remember it's not a race and uh, do your best to, to find what you can. Came across a, a smart sprinkler system, and I normally always used to leave them around alone. And Josh showed me that I'm getting rusty. <laughs> you just uh, pop them open here, and uh, all you have to do is uh, hit this button right here. You move it over, zone one, and activate. And then boom, you can activate the smart sprinkler systems. I didn't even think you could open them up. My problem solving skills are getting rusty. As, uh, Josh is getting ready uh, to do the crawl space. So you can see we try to dump as much as our, our stuff off as we can. And then he's going to guide you through the crawl space because I forgot my crawl suit. Not intentionally. <laughs> not int <laughs> um, but he'll, he'll guide you through the crawl space and I'm going to go in. And what we like to do at the same time we inspect crawl spaces is we uh, run water inside the property to see if any of the plumbing is leaking underneath the structure. So here we go. All right, so we are in the crawl space. It's actually not a bad crawl space. You can see around here. So under here, we're looking for, uh, you got your uh, piers. We wanna make sure that those are all level. They're all contacting the beams. Uh, this is kind of an unusual setup in that we're actually underneath a slab of concrete. Um, so it's not your, your typical uh, pier and beam space. But So we uh, look for the piers, make sure they're all level, all contacting. We look for uh, evidence of termites and other wood destroying insects. We look at uh, the ventilation, the drainage. And uh, Chris actually went upstairs into the house and he's running water. So we follow the drain lines 
throughout the crawl space. Uh, now I have to make sure that they are, uh, that they are, let we get here flushing right there. So we look for water leaks as he's running the water, and then we also look to make sure that the uh, drain system is properly sloped. Especially on something like this, where they've essentially added all of this uh, white PVC and tied it into the ABS right there. So your water running. I don't see any water leaks. We do have a pier uh, just on the other side of that drain line right there that's a little bit out of level. Not much. I mean, go underneath this drain line. Ugh. Don't see any dripping water yet, which is a good sign. This pier is a little bit out of level too. So just some small adjustments. You can see that pier back there. Let me zoom in a little bit. You can tell the relationship between the two. Uh, the one further back is leaning to the left just slightly. So maybe just some adjustments. Uh, according to the seller's disclosure, this was uh, foundation was raised in 2016, so six years ago. And that just can happen naturally. Uh, we see this on your standard wood pier and beams, uh, crawl spaces. Just over time, these piers get a little bit out of adjustment. So we want to make sure that uh, we get those adjusted so that we don't have any unlevelness problems or settlement problems upstairs. Yeah, overall, not a bad crawl space. No crazy animals, no chupacabras down here. Okay, I'm going to wrap the video up there. Uh, pretty good house. I mean, 1975, you have a, a newer roof, new HVAC, new plumbing, new electrical, new water heater, <laughs> new drain lines underneath the structure, uh, foundation freshly lifted out of the ground. You know, I don't know what the price point of this house, that's not my job, but I can tell you that they spent money on this house and this house, is in pretty good shape. I would actually even call it a gym flip. Yes, I did find things and I'm always gonna find things on every property. That's just what home inspectors do. Uh, you just have to judge the level of severity of the problem. So like the minor roof issues, it's a new roof and it's just some minor fixes. A, a roofer to get up there and fix that comparable to the price of the property is minimum. You know, it, it would not cost a lot of money to fix those issues of the on the on the roof that I found. So, um, and anything else I found in the structure is very minor in this case. So, uh, good house, and uh, catch a make sure you keep an eye out for us on the next video. And please always hit that like and subscribe button, and watch out for our podcast. Thanks, guys. Bye.